reporting, by the way. Uh, to our viewers at home, if you're just joining us, one person injured, a gunman on the loose at the Navy Yard in Washington, D.C. That is according to the U.S. Navy. An active shooter reported inside the, the Naval Sea Systems Command Headquarters, as Martha mentioned, Building 197 at 8.20 a.m. Eastern Time, which would have been 55 minutes ago. Again, one confirmed injury, but the way Peter's describing this is there's a possibility there could be a lot more than just one injured based on the number of ambulances that are being called in. Emergency personnel on the scene, a shelter in place order has been issued. At any given point, uh, this area could house about 3,000 uh, people working at the Naval Sea Systems Command headquarters. Jennifer Griffin is with us as well, our correspondent from the Pentagon. And Jennifer Griffin has been in this area. And Jennifer, can you hear me now? Yes, hi, Bill. Uh, uh, we've been on the phone with Navy officials this morning, and uh, we can confirm the details of what you were just mentioning. Of course, three shots fired at 8.20 a.m. this morning. What's significant about this building, this is the Naval Sea Systems Command. Uh, remember what is going on out in the eastern Mediterranean right now. We have four U.S. Navy destroyers who have been on standby for the last few weeks in the event that they are called to act, um, act uh, in, in the Syria crisis. Uh, they, have, they are employees with Tomahawk missiles on board. Uh, this Naval Sea Systems Command would be part of the, the operations uh, center and the, the backup. The, this is where the, the naval operations, this is really the, the heart of it. And it's, um, you've got the Pentagon and you've got the, the Navy Yard uh, very much involved in what was going to be a Navy operation, principally in Syria. So while we don't know anything about the shooter, we, we do know from a Navy officials that it's an active, uh, it's being treated as an active shooting, uh, shooter still on the loose, and uh, with one, at least one person injured, uh, they're taking this very seriously, and the Washington, D.C. traffic police are urging people to stay away from the Navy Yard this morning. That's good information. Jennifer, thank you. We'll try and reestablish a better phone line, too, and come back to you in uh, just a couple of minutes. Also back to Peter Ducey in a second. Martha with more. We are getting a report that two victims can now be confirmed. This, uh, according to the uh, information officer, Chris Kelly, uh, from the police department, in Maryland. Uh, it says they cannot give information on their status. The 11th Street Bridge has been turned into a triage center, uh, which is obviously nearby this scene uh, where the shooting is taking place this morning. KT McFarland uh, joins us this morning as well. She has a very deep knowledge of the U.S. Navy and obviously of, of all of our defense layout in this area. KT, uh, your thoughts on what we're seeing here this morning? The Washington Navy Yard is the beating heart of the United States Navy. Now, why do I say that? The, the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Greenert, his official home is there. In other words, his wife and family, their residence is, is on the Washington Navy Yard. It's, as you've been talking about, it's the oldest Navy Yard in the country. It's, it's, but more importantly, almost, is what Jennifer Griffin just mentioned. This is where the Navy plans where its ships go. It's not at the Pentagon. It's here at the Washington Navy Yard. It's, it's the fleet command. It is where the three-star admiral who is in charge of all Navy ships, whether they're on the East Coast, the West Coast, anywhere around the world, they're, this is where they are deployed from. So this may have other significance. It's too soon to say why or what's going on. But the fact that it is the United States Navy under attack um, in an area well, while we are abroad in areas that are vital to American national security interests, not only in the Pacific, but particularly in the Eastern Mediterranean, is there a tie-in? I don't know. Yeah. But I'll tell you, you know, Martha, you don't just walk up to one of these gates as a tourist, show your driver's license and say, I'd like to have a look around this historic place. You've got to be on a list. You've either got to be an employee there. You've got to be on an access list. Or you have to have an appointment with someone who is an employee there. And then you have to be escorted the entire time you're there. So this is not anything random. Yeah. KG, thank you. Stand by with us uh, this morning. And we're just confirming that there have been two victims. Uh, as we can report, I mean, you'll just look at the rescue scene that's on site here. The number of fire engines that have been brought into this area, you can see that traffic is at a complete standstill. They have tried to close as many areas as they can. Uh, we know that the 11th Street Bridge has been turned into a triage center. At this moment, it's important to stress that we can only confirm two victims in this situation. Uh, 
So we don't know uh, how large, how much larger this may be at this point. That's all, all we can confirm. The active shooter is someone who is still being actively sought on this scene. You heard Peter Ducey moments ago saying that at that point, police were basically running in different directions on this property because it would appear that they did not know where this person is. Building 197 appears to be the central hub of the activity that we're focusing on this morning. But there again, it's a large campus, a large uh, facility, and we, we don't know exactly, you know, where, where obviously, where this so person is. Based on the fact that 3,000 people work there, you can, yep. you can imagine, and, and on KT's description and Jennifer Breyer to her, uh, how big of an area this could be here. An active shooter, an active scene. Uh, that we're pursuing not only with our correspondents but also through the public affairs director uh, for the U.S. Navy who will join us momentarily. Peter Ducey was with us a moment ago, too. Peter, we have not spoken in, I'd say, four to five minutes. What have you seen since that time? Well, Bill, just after I got off the phone with you guys a few moments ago, I positioned myself at the corner of 7th and Emmett, as close as civilians can get right now, and I heard a very frantic call go out over a uh, metro, DC Metro police officer's radio. The call was for an officer down. Shots fired on the third floor of that building, and the call was for an officer down on the third floor. We have no report on his condition, but as soon as that call went out, more police tape went up, uh, and just as soon as Within a minute of hearing that call go out over the Metro Police radio for an officer down on the third floor, we saw two helicopters come and they are flying about as low as you can go without crashing into one of these buildings that, uh, in this area, the buildings are only three and four stories tall. We've got a, a helicopter coming in right now. And Bill, it's probably only about 150 feet off the ground circling. It's hard to say what exactly they are doing. Uh, they have they're circling a little bit away from where that barricaded uh, scene is. They're they're away from Building 197. But again, uh, the, the call, the very frantic, urgent call, was an officer yelling into his radio to all the other officers that there is a MPD, Met, DC Metro police officer down on the third floor, and uh, someone responded and said there is a Navy doctor in the lobby. But again, we don't know where the suspect is if that doctor has access to that officer who, according to the police radio here on the scene, is, is down. Peter, we're still hearing sirens in the background. Um, are there more ambulances still being dispatched to where you are? Uh, I haven't seen any more ambulances, Bill, but the addition of helicopters really adds to the chaos here because, again, I told you, they are flying really low. And they I can't tell which agency they are with, but they are flying low. It would appear that they are looking for something. I'm looking at one right now. There's a there's a construction scene with cranes just across the street, and the helicopter is flying below the top of the crane, just to give you a sense of how low these helicopters are flying. There is a crane across the street. The helicopter is flying well below uh, the top of that crane. And, and we mentioned earlier there's a parking lot right across the street, a big parking lot. That is where the helicopter is right now. It is a U.S. Park Police helicopter, blue and white, and it is just circling around, I would say, an area uh, only a few blocks wide, but it is a concentrated area. Peter, so, uh, there was a report that there was a gunman on the fourth floor. We cannot confirm that. And then we just heard a report about a, a, an officer shot on the third floor. Would you say that building is four stories tall or higher? Looking right now, Bill. Um, it's hard. It's hard to tell, uh, and it's hard to tell from where I'm standing because there. It looks like the the lower floors are kind of obscured by another building. But uh, this is not something like in another big city where you would have a big. Uh, where am I going? Okay. All right. So they're they're moving me back uh, from M Street to L Street, Bill. Okay. But as far right. as I can tell, uh, it, it's not a big skyscraper. It's a uh, building it's only a few stories tall and Understood. you know 3,000 or so people work there they're all sheltering in place last okay T take a moment to get repositioned Peter we'll bring you back here in a matter of minutes here Washington Post reporting that the police are telling the newspaper at least three possibly four shot inside the Navy Yard in that shooting 8:20 a.m. Eastern Time 
shots reported. That would have been a little more than an hour ago, and now we're waiting to see whether or not this situation has been resolved or not. Anybody who's hunkered down uh, in that building, any shooter that might be in that building, is got to be sensing the tremendous presence of the effort to find him. There are choppers overhead, as we just showed you, uh, and a huge police presence. And all of these streets have been blocked off in this area to make sure that nobody who has done this can get away. And as Bill just mentioned, Washington Post now reporting three to possibly four victims involved in this. I want to bring in Ed Ziegler, who is on the phone with us. He is director of public affairs for the Navy Yard. Obviously, Ed, uh, a very uh, frightening and intense morning for all of you. Uh, yes, it has been. Tell me a little bit about what you know, sir. Well, this morning uh, we received uh, reports of the shots fired in uh, Building 197, as you reported. Uh, the Navy District Washington Police and the D.C. Metro Police responded. Uh, as you know, this is an ongoing developing situation, so uh, just be careful with the, any reports that you get because, uh, you know, a lot of this can change as time goes on. So. Understood. Understood. Tell me about Building 197. Who works in that building? Uh, building 197 is the home of the Naval Sea Systems Command. Uh, I heard you talking about the height of the building. It's it's about uh, four stories high. Okay. Um, there's about 3,000 folks that uh, work there. What time would most people be arriving at work in that building on a normal day? Uh, typically uh, between six and nine o'clock. Okay, uh, and we believe that this started about an hour ago, about 8:20 uh, in the morning or 8:02, uh, somewhere in the in that area. Right. Uh, in in terms of the number of people injured, can you can you confirm at least what you know right now? Um, I can confirm that there have been uh, 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 multiple uh, reports of uh, wounded individuals and uh, multiple um, fatalities. However, uh, like I said, the situation is developing, and it's hard to really nail down what the numbers are at this point. So you can confirm that there have been multiple injuries and multiple fatalities. You feel confident in that at this point? Yes, ma'am. What about the shooter? Uh, any indication of whether or not the shooter is still on the loose? It appears from the action that we're seeing outside the building that that's the case. Yeah, I have no reports that the uh, shooter has been apprehended. So uh, this is an ongoing situation. Any reports of the shooter, uh, what this person looks like, whether or not they're in uniform, uh, any reports from people inside the building on cell phones, anything of that nature? Uh, we just have a few preliminary reports, uh, nothing that I want to release on that right now. All right. Um, Ed, thank you very much. Uh, Obviously, this is this is a, a tough morning for all of you, and and you know we're hearing from so many viewers and people who are watching this. Our hearts go out to everybody who is involved in working at this Navy yeah. Yard. Ed, stay with us for just a moment. Yeah, I, just, I didn't hear your last answer, Ed. We were told 30 minutes ago that this was that they were looking for a man. Um, can, can you go that far? Um, I believe the uh, initial description was uh, the, was for a male. Yes. All right, and and that's as, uh, that's everything you know. White, well, black, right Hispanic. What, what was he a member of the, the U.S. Navy or not? Uh, I don't have any information on that right now. Okay. All right, Ed, thank you. We'll be in touch with you in your office uh, okay, in you. the next couple of minutes. Uh, Chuck Nash is with us as well, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you loud and clear, Bill. Um, you have been in this area, uh, the Washington Navy Yard. Mm -hmm. KT McFarland, Jennifer Griffin were giving us terrific descriptions for what they would be doing there and a little bit of the history. Give us your view of it. Uh, first off, that, that building has a... Uh, a very long history there at the Navy Yard. It is the Naval Sea Systems Command headquarters, and they don't run operations out of there. Operations are run out of fleet uh, headquarters uh, and numbered fleet headquarters when you get over, uh, for example, 6th Fleet uh, in the Mediterranean, 5th Fleet uh, in, the, uh, in the Gulf uh, area. So this, the Naval Sea Systems Command, what their job is, is to develop and procure uh, the uh, weapons and, and ships.